Research fraud refers to cases where data were either fabricated or falsified to provide false support for the researcher's hypothesis. Fabrication means the data were never collected, but were made up. Falsification means existing data were illegitimately altered including manipulating research materials, images, data, equipment, or processes. Falsification also includes changing or omitting data or results in such a way that the research is not accurately represented. For example, a person might falsify data to make it fit with the desired end result of a study. In 1998, physician Andrew Wakefield published a study in The Lancet, claiming that his research indicated a connection between autism and the measles mumps rubella vaccine. This research was highly respected and undermined public confidence in the vaccine, leading to many parents refusing the shot. Ultimately, this led to increases in the number of cases of measles and mumps in the U.S. and Europe, with some areas reporting very dangerous and widespread outbreaks. When faced with an investigation in 2010, it was revealed that Wakefield and his colleagues had altered facts about the children in their study, and Wakefield had even been paid off by a lawyer planning to sue the manufacturer of the vaccine. The British General Medical Council found Wakefield guilty of fraud and misconduct. In 2006, Korean researcher Hwang Woo Suk was found to have fabricated a series of experiments in stem cell research, a field in which he was once considered one of the pioneering experts. He was previously famous for his two science journal articles in which he reported success in creating human embryonic stem cells through cloning, but is now infamous for his massive case of fraud and scientific misconduct after it was revealed that much of his stem cell research had been faked. Huang was charged with embezzlement and bioethics law violations, for which he was sentenced to a two-year suspended prison sentence and barred from engaging in stem cell research by the South Korean government, as well as fired from his position with Seoul National University. However, Huang continues to lead research in creating embryonic stem cell lines from cloned pig embryos, and his lab has been actively publishing manuscripts on PubMed. In 2016, a group of researchers from University Malaya was found to duplicate the images of cells in the photos contained in their research article. The researchers were later found to have published the same results three times, in three different journals. The authors are almost all from Malaysia and not the same on these three publications. Yet, all three papers have same two corresponding authors Sekaran Minayamdi, a professor at the Department of Molecular Medicine at the University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur, and the first author, his PhD student, Nima Sami. In January 2014, Haruo Koobo Kata from the Raikon Center for Developmental Biology in Kobe, Japan, published two papers describing the method called stimulus-triggered acquisition of pluripotency in nature. But they were retracted in July after Nature discovered that the papers included plagiarized writing, misidentified images, and misreported data. Haruo Koobo Kata, the lead author, who performed the studies and wrote the manuscripts, was found guilty of falsifying data. Biologist Yoshiki Sasi, leader of the Riken Research Group, was a co-author on both papers. He was criticized for his poor supervision. During the investigation, Sasa committed suicide at the Riken Center. Both fabrication and falsification are serious forms of misconduct because they result in a scientific record that does not accurately reflect observed truth. First of all, the scientific literature is contaminated with false empirical data. This alone holds back scientific progress. Researchers might pursue a line of research that seems promising, but is in fact baseless. Honest researchers see their projects fail to replicate promising results. They might incorrectly conclude this is due to their personal lack of research skills. The project might be abandoned without the failed replications ever coming to light. Secondly, precious funding resources that could have been spent on valid avenues of research are spent on fraudulent research and related projects that build on it, but are in fact less promising than they seem. Thirdly, once fraud is exposed, the reputation and credibility of the field, including the majority of researchers who do have integrity, is severely damaged. This can result in more difficulty to obtain funding in a general area where fraud has been exposed. This puts honest researchers who had the bad luck to be in a related field at a disadvantage. Why do scientists commit fraud? Overall, academic fraud is rare, which makes it all the more shocking when a major case is uncovered. To the public, 
It may seem mind-boggling that scientists would go to such lengths to deceive. In an ideal world, scientists work together to make incremental discoveries that add to the body of knowledge in a field and are recognized for quality work. In reality, the world of science can be cutthroat and isolating, with little oversight. Stem cell research is certainly not the only research field with a fraud problem, but it has all the right elements to motivate dishonesty. It's a cutting-edge field with the potential to discover treatments for human diseases. It attracts highly competitive people who are all scrambling to make the next big discovery. And that discovery must be made, written, and published before any competitors can catch up. Add that to an academic culture that places ever-rising pressure on researchers to churn out publications in order to land jobs or tenure, especially publications in high-impact journals like Nature and Science, and you begin to see why researchers resort to cutting corners or massaging their data. In 2014, Nobel Prize winner Randy Skeekman spoke out against publishing in prestigious journals, saying that they contributed to unhealthy research practices, and advised people to boycott them. Barring acceptance at a major journal, academics must still publish somewhere, and this pressure has created a market for yet another type of academic fraud, predatory journals. Fraud cases are invariably accompanied by reluctance or even unwillingness to share data and research information with others. Unless researchers are challenged or even required to be open and transparent, fraud can be tempting in an academic climate where publishing positive, confirmatory results is held in high regard. Certain instances of fraud can be easy to spot. For example, if a referee knows for a fact that a particular laboratory does not have the facilities to conduct the research that was published. Or, if it's obvious an image looks manipulated or is made up from several different experiments. The data from the control experiments might be too perfect. In such situations, an investigation would be conducted to determine if an act of fraud was committed. To help prevent fraud, most publishers have strict policies on manipulation of images and access to the reported data. In general, digital image enhancement is acceptable. However, a positive relationship between the original data and the resulting image must be maintained to avoid creating unrepresentative data or the loss of meaningful signals. No specific feature within an image may be enhanced, obscured, moved, removed, or introduced. Adjustments of brightness, contrast, or color balance are usually acceptable as long as they do not obscure or eliminate any information present in the original. If a figure has been significantly manipulated, you must note the nature of the enhancements in the figure legend or in the materials and methods section. Authors may also be asked to provide the raw data in connection with a paper for editorial review. Therefore, all data for a specific paper should be retained for a reasonable time after publication. There should be named custodian for the data. Studies undertaken in human beings, for example clinical trials have specific guidelines about the duration of data retention. What about unintentional error that comes across as misconduct? According to the U.S. Office of Research Integrity, research misconduct does not include honest error or differences of opinion. But, it's best never to have the integrity of your work come into question. As a researcher and author, it is essential to understand what constitutes appropriate data management, in data collection, retention, analysis and reporting, in accordance with responsible conduct of research.